Y'all are gonna love this one. I'm giving you three of my favorite retouching brush presets for Lightroom. Let's go ahead and get into it. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hola, mi amigos. My name is Pi, welcome to Adorama TV. Let's get straight into this. So this is a great time to pause, download the exercise file. I will have the DNG file downsized a bit. See, I'm working on the 100 megapixel RAW that came straight off the new GFX 100S or whatever it is. Uh, fantastic camera. I did actually do a review of it and this is one of those images that I, I shot during the review. Now, quick note, Lightroom doesn't necessarily like super large RAW files, especially when you get in and start doing brush work. So just understand that if you have 50, 100 megapixel files, brushing it can get a little bit tricky. So let's go ahead and jump into the develop module. I'm gonna select the brush tool. Now, what you'll see here is the retouching toolkit from Visual Flow. This is the retouching toolkit that I designed for photographers. I'm gonna show you three of my favorite kind of retouching presets that I'm always using from there. The first one is this quick dodge and lift preset. So this is a great time to pause the video, dial in these settings as I explain them what it's doing is raising exposure a bit lowering contrast raising highlights shadows and then lowering whites a bit it's also going to increase overall clarity which helps to preserve contrast and it's going to reduce saturation what is this overall doing well it's actually a tested preset to essentially paint light into your shot so i can use this and paint light directly into the image wherever I want, it's gonna retain contrast and color, and it's also tested so that I can hold down Alter Option and drag to the right to strengthen or drag to the left to reduce the effect. Now the power in this comes with scrolling down and going to the range mask function. So I'm gonna flip this to luminance, and what you're gonna do is bring the range up, and now what happens is the effect only gets added to the areas of skin that fall into highlights. See, by pulling the range up, I'm eliminating the effect over the shadows. So I'm gonna get somewhere to around a plus 40, and I like that right there, and then I'm gonna drag the smoothing up just a bit so it's a little bit more of a subtle look. So on the left side, it's gonna only, it's gonna kind of have a very sharp fall off. On the right side, it kind of smooths the overall adjustment. I'm gonna pull it to about plus 60. Now just this little adjustment, look at what it does to skin. It's like a quick, well, it's exactly what it says it is. It's a quick dodge and burn, like a dodge and lift of, of skin tones. And the cool thing is, is with that luminance range mask, we don't have to really get super refined with how we paint it on because it's not gonna affect other areas. Brush numero dos. Okay, we're gonna go to new and I'm gonna drop down to skin smoothing. So I use this quite a bit. What this brush is doing is reducing texture, clarity, and dehaze, and then it's adding a little bit of noise. This is to basically smooth skin tone a little bit more and reducing sharpening. Now again, you're gonna paint this over the image. If you already have smooth skin, like, like she already has really great skin, uh, you can kind of go lighter with this effect, but I use this a lot. So dial in these settings. When you want to save it out, simply scroll all the way to the bottom of your list. Your list is going to be short because I have the retouching toolkit installed. And you're going to go save current settings as new preset, okay? So smooth skin, I'm just going to paint this over the skin. And you'll notice that it's basically going to start reducing some of the texture and kind of just helping smooth. So I'm gonna also paint over the forehead and kind of over the lip just a little bit. I don't like covering the eyes, so if you press O to see the mask, I kind of leave the the eyes, the, um, the lips, the eyebrows, everything else is kind of like left as is. And then when you want to reduce the effect, hold down Alter Option, you can drag this to the left to reduce the effect, you can drag it to the right to strengthen the effect. So you'll see how much it's smoothing once again, that's the point in having tested presets is because I can go to the left and right and just increase or decrease the effect and it keeps contrast, saturation, everything in check. I actually like it kind of where it's at. So that looks totally fine right there. Last but not least, I'm gonna take you down to the eyes. This is all designed and, and organized based on kind of workflow. So number three is the Intensify Iris preset. What this is gonna do is raise exposure, contrast, it boosts highlights, boosts white point, and kind of increases the blacks. And what happens is when I zoom in, which by the way, this is what 100% on a 
100 megapixel RAW file looks like. You can even see that it's slightly front focused on the uh, on the lashes. So what happens when I paint this in is it basically exaggerates the iris. I find that this is oftentimes more than enough when it comes to enhancing eyes. You don't even need to go and whiten anything. Just by enhancing the irises and the kind of the catch lights that exist, you get to a really nice look and effect. So I just kind of paint it around, zoom back out, and you get this beautiful pop in the eyes that looks absolutely fantastic. One thing I like to do sometimes with this is paint it on separately onto each eye. If you want a little bit more control, the right eye is a little bit on the bright side. So what I might do is lower the overall effect and then I might paint another one of these on the left eye. Whoops, delete that, scroll to the left, paint another one over the left eye and just reduce the effect a little bit on this one. So that way we have a little bit more of a good balance between them. So let's go to about right here, zoom back out, and just make sure that both eyes are kind of the same sort of brightness. Okay, so at this point, you should have those brush presets saved out. If not, go ahead and go back, pause the video, dial them in, but I want you to see the difference because it's huge. So look, this is turning off those brushes, this is turning them back on. It's such a subtle and easy thing to do, and yet the impact over our photographs is dramatic. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. We have new videos going up all the time from amazing creators. So if you wanna be notified, turn on notifications. In the meantime, let me know what you think about the overall technique, the brushes. If you guys are interested in visual flow presets, you guys can check them out at vfpresets.com. Y'all can DM me, follow me at PyGers on Instagram, as well as at Born and Creative on TikTok. That's it for me, folks. So see you guys next time. I wish I knew how to say that in Spanish. I need to learn. Hasta luego. Hasta mañana. Nope, next week. Anyway, I need to practice some Spanish. <laughs>